Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Birchfield, the Director of Research and Engagement at Trends Research and Advisory. We're in Washington, D.C. today with the Stimson Center and an event looking at security and insecurity in the wake of the Iran nuclear deal. I'm very pleased to be joined by David Albright, the founder of the Institute for Science and International Security. David, thanks for coming today. Okay. We had a very interesting discussion about a wide range of issues about Iran, the sanctions mm -hmm. and the deal. You raise a very important point, we feel, on looking, we have a deal on paper. We have obligations, we have details on it. And you made the basic but very key point, let's just enforce the thing. Mm -hmm. Could you give us some insights on why there's a reluctance for the various governments to strictly enforce this deal? Well, I think, I think in the Obama administration, particularly, they're, they're, they're worried that if they enforce stringently, uh, and they could do that, that, that Iran will, will start to walk away from the deal. And, and I think they, it's, it's actually been, a, in my view, a central problem uh, of the implementation of the deal is, is that the Obama administration is too easily bought into this, in a sense, this threat from Iran and, and has not wanted to rock the boat. Uh, I, I think it, if you're going to have an arms control agreement, and that's essentially what this mm -hmm. is, if it's going to last, it's going to have to be enforced because it's inevitable that opponents to the deal are going to have power at some point. Unfortunately, now it's right now, or will be in January. You have you'll have a group that that really believes the deal has has not served U.S. interests, and I think one of the ways to engage with them about this deal is that is that now the deal needs to be strictly enforced and perhaps improved. But the but the bottom line is is that that I don't think Iran is going to walk away um, because you enforce it rigidly or robustly, uh, however you want to interpret it. Um, I think they're going to want to stay in the deal because they get concrete benefits from it. But they're constantly pushing against the envelope to try to get more benefits from it. And, and I think a mistake of the Obama administration has been not to push back harder. Yeah, but that's an interesting point. We see that in all international agreements. States do their best to take advantage of them, exploit the <laughs> loopholes, the that's shortcomings. Right. But what, in your view, in your experience in this area, why do we see the U.S. and its European partners being so reluctant to put pressure on Iran? What is it about Iran that makes people reluctant to hold it to an international agreement that is publicly accessible? I, I don't think it's all our uni um, European allies. I think France has been stricter okay. on parts of this than, than the U.S. I, I think the... I think part of the problem here is, is that, that Obama made this a, a central part of his legacy. And, and it's tough to, as an implementer, in a sense, in government, to be pushing Iran if your president thinks that it's his single most important accomplishment in foreign policy. And so I think the, you know, we were just hoping that with a new administration, whatever it is, we were, uh, my own institute probably more favoring Hillary okay. than than Trump, we we expected her to to enforce this deal much more, mm -hmm. and, and and for no other reason, she's not going to be as attached to it in the same way, mm -hmm. and that and that enforcement I think is is healthy for a deal because if if you let Iran just get away with things and it's perceived as getting away with things, and then support for the deal is going to is going to is going to be reduced, and and those who are opposed to the deal are going to find more opportunities to to end it essentially. And if we were to end the deal as part of the security framework in the region. What do you think would how would how would Iran respond to that if the deal was thrown out by the U.S. or the U.S. declares it's not willing to work within the deal anymore? Yeah, and and, and walking away from the deal is I think is a real possibility. It obviously depends on who Trump puts in various positions in the government, what he what his priorities are. But but I think it, it's a real possibility. You could have people in the administration that don't believe in arms control, don't believe in this deal. And, and, and would view a confrontation with Iran as healthier than letting the deal go on. Okay. And so I think, but it, obviously if that happened, Iran's going to rebuild up its nuclear infrastructure. We'll be back to this, this conflict where Iran is going to be put under pressure to reduce its program, get rid of it probably in this case uh, from the Trump administration, and that and there'll be threats of military force. Okay. And so I think that it will go back to this very intense kind of conflict, I personally think it won't lead to war. I mean, I, I think, or let me put it this way, war is happening all over the Middle East right now. Yes. Now, could it escalate to a huge war? 
I would I would be surprised if that took place, uh, but I think it, that military tensions would certainly go up. Uh, I think it would, it would be very important to a Trump administration to make a military threat uh, to Iran that if they crossed a certain path on nuclear development that they could be bombed. Okay. I mean, Obama did the same thing, mm. and he he created the line at nuclear weapons uh, acquisition, and Iran never marched up to that line. Okay. So I think it it. Uh, it could get very tense, mm -hmm. but they could do it. And I think, I, I would hope that they would try to replace it with something. Mm -hmm. That they that if they are gonna get rid of it, that they come up with a strategy to replace it with something that is more suitable to their, their views. Okay, that's great, David. Thank you very much for participating okay. today.